Hello, welcome to Brer's Cartoons History. My name is Brer Spence and today we'll be talking about the War of the Pacific, also known as the Saltpeter War. Okay, let's begin. The war, as you might have guessed, was over Saltpeter, which the Antukama Desert was rich in, which was in a border dispute with Chile and Bolivia. Since the 1840s, the Bolivian territory of Antofagasca and Peruvian territory of Tarapacá had large Chilean population and the mining was done by powerful Chilean mining companies. In 1866, a treaty was signed between Chile and Bolivia to resolve the border dispute. The border was to be at the 24 parallel, while the mining proceeds in the area between the 23rd and the 25th parallel were to be shared equally. This made Chile one of the richest in the Americas, which they used to improve their military. On February 6, 1873, seeing Chile as a threat, Bolivia and Peru signed a secret treaty of alliance to counter Chilean economic expansion. But Bolivia did sign an agreement with Chile to put a 25-year moratorium on raising taxes on Chilean mining companies in Bolivian territory. On May 4, 1876, General Hion Daza overthrew the President Thomas Frias. In a coup d'etat with his Carrados Infantry Battalion as his power base and killed any political opposition and to gather support, he made anti chilean speeches saying that they were robbing Bolivia's natural resources. On February 10th, President Daza put a new tax on nitrate miners, which the Chilean mining companies refused because of the 1874 agreement. So Daza ordered to auction off all the nitrate mines that were in Chilean hands. Daza knew that Peru support him due to the secret alliance, but he believed that Argentina would join him because Argentina was in a border dispute with Chile over the Panagonia region, making Chile face a war on two fronts. But on February 14, 1879, the day that the Chilean mine were due to be auctioned off, Chilean troops occupied Argentina and the war had begun with Argentina remaining neutral. Due to the few usable roads and railways lines in the Antukama Desert, naval superiority would be important for moving and supplying troops. The Chilean Navy was superior to the Peruvian Navy due to its high levels of discipline and training, while the Peruvian Navy was in a poor state, except for the turreted monitor Oscar. Some ships had serious structural problems and a poor crew training, and blue essentials to repair damaged ships. Bolivia, despite having ports and a coastline, had no navy, so Daza allowed any Bolivian ship to become pirateers, which meant that Peruvian navy would face the Chilean navy alone. Chile would begin by blockading important Peruvian port of Iquique, but it was broken on May 21st, but it cost the Peruvians the ironclad ship Independia due to it running aground. The only Peruvian successes came from the ironclad monitor Oscar to October 8th when the Oscar engaged with the Chilean armored frigates Almirante Cochrane and Barranco El Calando. With their British cannons were able to penetrate the Huskar's armor, while the Huskar couldn't penetrate theirs. After taking so much damage she was close to sinking and the loss of her captain, they surrendered and the ship was sent to Chilean port to get repaired. The loss of the Huskar, the Chileans had naval superiority and blockaded Peruvian ports. On November 2nd, the Chileans captured the Peruvian port of Parasqua and the Allied army launched a counterattack to retake the city. The Chileans occupied the Twin Hills of San Francisco and repelled the Allied attack with the Allied army in full round and the Bolivian army was in complete disarray. But a small Peruvian force managed to regroup and defeat the Chileans at the Battle of Tarapacá, but the Peruvians would retreat to Arica, leaving Tarapacá to the Chileans. The last months of 1879 would see President Daza deposed by the Council of State and he and his family would flee to Europe with a considerable amount of the Peruvian treasury. 
he would be replaced by the Liberal General Narcios Carparo. In Peru, President Pedro would be overthrown in a coup d'etat by Nicolas de Piroa. On February 24th, 1880, a Chilean force of 13,000 strong landed near Alio and faced no resistance. But on March 22nd, the Chileans found the Allied army of 15,000 men at Tacna. So the Chileans sent a force of 4,400 men, assault the Peruvian stronghold on the Los Angeles Hill, which was defended by 1,400 Peruvian troops. After some bitter fighting, the Chileans took the stronghold after a Berbena charge. On May 26 at El de El Alianza, east of Tacna, the Allies entrenched themselves in a strong defensive position, but the Chileans defeated the Allies with heavy losses on both sides. The Battle of El de El Alianza would break the Peruvian Bolivian alliance, and the Bolivians would retreat into the Andes, and the Peruvians would retreat to Arequipa. After taking the Peruvian city of Acqua, on June 7th, the United States tried to start peace talks, and on the 22nd October, the USS Wakawa peace talks would begin with the three warring countries, but peace talks broke down when Chile demanded the Peruvian territory of Tarapacá as an indemnity for the war expenses, and war would quickly resume. On November 19th, Chile sent 8,800 men to land at Pisco, and were later reinforced by 14,000 troops and began their march to Lima. Meanwhile, President Aurora mobilized at least 20,000 men and more than 100 mostly old artillery pieces. On January 13, 1881, the Battle of St. Juan or Chiriros began. The Peruvians' our defensive line, which curved 10 miles along the series of heights inland from Marcovala Hill on the coast. Due to the Peruvians being stretched thin, the Chileans made three breakthroughs leading to the collapse of the Peruvian defensive line and at night the town of Chiriros was looted and burned down by Chileans, Chinese and slaves. Every battered Peruvian battalions retreated to the inner defensive line. The Chileans wanted to avoid another battle before entering Lima and open negotiations, but they quickly broke down. On the 15th, the Battle of Mina Forest began at 2 p.m. with the Peruvians launching a surprise attack on the dangerously advancing Chilean left and forced the Chileans to retreat. But the Chileans launched a counterattack at 3 p.m. and made several breakthroughs. And the Peruvians and the President Perros led the field, and the Chileans and Peruvian stragglers and slaves looted the and burned down the town of Melflores. With the Peruvian army no longer existing, Lima fell into riots, and the mayor requested the Chileans to enter the city to restore order, which they did on January 17th, and the Peruvian navy was scuttled. This started the longest phase of the war, which was a guerrilla war which lasted till the 20th of October 1883, when the Treaty of Ancor and other treaties gave Chile its modern borders and made Bolivia into a landlocked country. If you like this video like and subscribe see you next time